Hey, my name is Dr. Joe Tuitt, and I direct the Office of Admissions here at the Indiana Academy for Science, Mathematics, and Humanities. Thank you so much for joining me today for Lunch and Learn, where we're going to discuss and answer the question, what is the Academy and how do we apply? I'm going to be very respectful of your time today and keep my presentation very short uh, in order to allow for the maximum amount of time to answer any questions that you might have at the end of the program. Um, when I conclude the presentation, I will turn off the recording so that I can answer your questions. Um, to give you just a little bit about my background, I came to the Indiana Academy by way of Ball State University, where I worked in the Office of Admissions. I've been with the Academy now for 33 years, having only missed the very first year of operation here at the Academy. So I've been very privileged to know all of our alumni and all of our current students. So with that little bit in mind, let's go ahead and jump into today's topic. What is the Academy? Academy and how do we apply? So first, the Indiana Academy is one of the premier high schools in the country. In addition to being the number one public high school and the number one college prep high school in the state of Indiana, we are consistently ranked in the top 20 of all high schools in the United States. And our faculty are consistently ranked in the top 10 in the United States states. Um, we do have an extensive course offering uh, that you can see in our course catalog on our website, and all of our classes are either college level, advanced placement, or dual credit, and our classes are credited with uh, Ball State University. Students typically earn on average about 21, 22 college credits um, at the point of graduation, which, as you can imagine, gives them an absolutely fantastic uh, jump start on college, not to mention it also uh, can save quite a bit of money. Um, and in addition to that, uh, we do also offer the Indiana College Corps. So if your student is doing that right now, they can continue to do that with us. Um, the Academy does prepare students for that next step in life upon graduating from the academy. So um, to talk just a moment about our alumni, uh, they attend some of the very best colleges and universities in Indiana, across the country, and quite literally around the world. Uh, we actually have them studying absolutely everywhere. Uh, having been at the Academy, like I mentioned, for 33 years, I can say without any hesitation whatsoever that the Indiana Academy is a school like none other. So what students tend to thrive at the Academy? You can see on your screen there, I have um, three specific categories of students listed, but the the brief answer to that would be students who are looking for academic and social growth. So let's take a look at the three I have on the screen there. Your high achievers, creative thinkers, and high ability or gifted learners. I'm going to give you a, kind of a brief description uh, to surround both of those. Um, see if, as I'm talking if you recognize your student in any of that. Um, so first, let's talk about our high achievers. Those are the students who typically get A's or all A's. Um, they really enjoy school. They complete all of their assignments on time. They're interested. They're attentive. They tend to learn with ease or relative ease and are highly alert and observant. Our creative thinkers may not be motivated by grades like our high achievers are. They are typically those students who tend to ask all the what if questions, and they seem to always be overflowing with ideas. Uh, these are often our students who can seem off task or like they're daydreaming um, or act um, as if they're in a world of their own. And then our high ability or gifted learners, uh, they are similar to our creative thinkers in that they may not necessarily be motivated by grades. They tend to be those students who pose unforeseen questions. Um, they're curious. 
They can generate complex abstract ideas uh, that tend to be beyond their group or their, their age peers. And as such, they can often prefer to um, be in the company of more of their intellectual peers. So as I was giving those rather brief descriptions of each of those um, category of student, did you see your, your, your child in one of those? So all of these students can be very successful and thrive at the Indiana Academy. So why is a high ability education important to these students? In their home high schools, their current high schools, high ability and creative students, and to a lesser degree, high achieving students can often feel um, socially isolated often feeling like they have to hide their interests um, in order to fit in. Uh, they hide their passion for learning, their interest in kind of doing some of those deep dives and topics. And we often see these students pretending that the good grade they got on an assignment or at the term was not the result of uh, working hard or the result of passion or interest, but more so the result of good luck. Oh, gosh, I got lucky on that one. Um, uh, we can also see them thinking about grades. We can also see them purposely um, not getting a good grade uh, so that they're not standing out. Again, all of this to try to fit in to whatever that social norm in their current school system is. Um, by bringing the uh, all of these students together, the high achievers, the creative thinkers, and the high ability or gifted learners together in one educational environment, we tend to create a community where it's okay to enjoy learning. It's okay to ask those what if questions and to enjoy a um, deep critical analysis of different topics and different works. The, the academy is a community where intellectual peers tend to um, challenge each other to succeed, and then they support each other's growth. We're a community where students can be exactly who they are. They don't have to hide any aspects of themselves. This allows students then to grow intellectually, to thrive academically. Um, it allows them to develop strong social networks, often talking about making uh, lifelong uh, friendships. They learn study skills. They learn time management. Um, they learn how to advocate for themselves in a campus-like environment. And they leave the academy prepared to go on to college and to life beyond. As you can imagine, there are lots of benefits to an academy education. So I just want to point out um, a few of them that you see there on the screen. And then I often find that it helps to hear other people's experiences. So I wanna share with you comments from three of our over 4,000 alumni. So a couple that I wanna point out, um, I've already mentioned in terms of education, our classes are all college level, advanced placement or dual college credit classes. And students are going on to earn um, uh, quite a number of college credits. Um, and then they are all taught by our expert faculty who all have a minimum of a master's degree in their content area and over one third have um, uh, doctoral or terminal degrees in their fields. Um, the opportunities that the academy is able to provide students is pretty incredible. Um, students go on to earn scholarships and prestigious college admission. And again, those are colleges from Indiana, from outside of Indiana, across the country and, and worldwide. In terms of their scholarships, uh, we have um, students self-reporting, receiving over $10 million collectively each year, and they're using about $6 million of that. Some are um, 
specific to colleges that they opt not to attend. So about $6 million they're using of the uh, scholarship and financial assistance um, offers that they're, that they're given. Now, uh, we do have an office called the College and Career Counseling Center that begins working with students as soon as they arrive um, to help them start thinking about um, majors and, and colleges and uh, looking at scholarships and how to apply and, and kind of walking that journey with them. And then I've also mentioned uh, the sense of community and the growth that they receive here at the Academy. So let me share with you uh, the comments um, from three of the of alumni. And I'm going to read these directly as they've written them. Um, so the first uh, comment is from Sydney. And Sydney says, I originally chose the Academy because I wanted something different out of my high school experience and because I wanted to be challenged in school. The Academy prepared me for college, especially through the dual credit options. I was able to graduate from college in three years, which dramatically changed the course of my career. Sydney's experience is one that many of our students have where um, they're able to earn, as I've mentioned, that significant college credit while they're here, which gives them that jump start uh, at college. And uh, some students will use that then to graduate early and others will use that to um, take a, a, a earn additional majors or minors. I was just talking with a student or an alum, excuse me, last weekend who was sharing with me that he started college as a junior because he had earned so many college credits here at the academy. But instead of graduating in two years, he he went on to graduate in four years because he opted to earn three majors and five minors. Um, so um, he leveraged that in a slightly different way from what Sydney, Sydney did. And next, let me share with you Bradley's comment. Uh, Bradley says, I often felt out of place at my home high school. I was looking for a place where I could be academically challenged and rewarded for taking risks. The Academy opened my eyes to critical thinking. I found I was much more prepared for college than most of my university peers. Um, and then the final one that I want to mention is from Tuan. And Tuan says, the Academy is without a doubt the biggest turning point in my life from both an academic and personal standpoint. The plethora of academic resources and educational benefits are equal to the lessons that carry far beyond the classroom. I learned how to talk and listen, how to debate socialize and community with people. I learned how to absorb information quickly, respect differing thoughts and ask poignant questions. I think Tuan's summation uh, is such a good one um, because our students are able to learn some of these skills that as I've mentioned, not only carry them through college, but go on with them much beyond to life beyond um, and uh, can truly make a difference in their academic, but also in their social lives. The benefits are, as you can imagine, as varied as the students who come through our doors. Um, and each student has their own reason for attending the academy. Um, so, but we talk a little bit more about uh, students' reasons why uh, and our Discovery Day program. So I'm not going to go over that here because, again, I want to be respectful of your time. So let's go ahead and, and move along with the presentation because now we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics, how does my child apply to the academy? You can see on your screen there the link to our application on the website. Uh, the application is to be completed by the student. And um, let me share with you, though, uh, some tips that you can pass along to your child as they're working on the application. Um, first, I always like to point out that with our short answer questions, there are no um, right or wrong answers. Uh, the, we're trying to get to know the student, how they think, um, what's important to them, and how they're going to fit into our environment so that we can make sure that we have all of the resources available to help them be very successful while they're here. The short answer questions do have a minimum of a 200 word um, minimum. <laughs> um, and these are the first impressions that your student, your child is going to make on the file review committee. 
So I always recommend to the students to really pay attention to what they're writing. Make sure that their response is fully answering the question asked. And to keep in mind that everything counts. Content, organization, the mechanics, spelling, uh, capitalization, punctuation, everything counts. Students can work on this either right there in the application or they can work on it offline um, in whatever word processing that they prefer and then copy and paste it back into the application. It's also absolutely fine if your child wants to have you take a look at it and or another respected adult. Um, again, looking for all of those different points um, as well as making sure that it's fully answering the question. The next tip is about our, uh, the recommendations that we require. Um, when your child sits down to work on the application, they should have with them the names of the people that they want to do the recommendation, their um, titles, email addresses, and telephone numbers, because they're going to put all of that into the application when it's asked for, and then a, a recommendation form will be automatically sent to your student. Um, so with the recommendations, there's one school official form, which can be either the guidance counselor, the principal, assistant principal, registrar, somebody that's in an administrative type role. And then there are two, what I like to call at-large recommendations, and those can be from teachers, they can be from coaches, mentors, uh, employers, if your student has a job, um, anybody that's not related um, to your, your, your child can complete those recommendations. And we do prefer teachers uh, if possible, but understanding that sometimes that's not possible. And so going outside of that is absolutely fine. And then the last one will be from you as the parent of, of the applicant. Nobody knows your child as well as you do. And so we would appreciate very much a recommendation from you. We do ask a couple of questions in that parent recommendation. And then um, we ask for your comments. In those comments, it's always so helpful if you can share with us um, stories or examples of where your, your child was and where they are now so that we can see the growth that they've made. Um, uh, one more tip about those recommendations, uh, your student can, after they've submitted the entire application, they can go on to their student portal, they'll receive the link for that. Uh, you can also uh, link to it directly off of our website on that apply page that you see there in front of you. And uh, they can check the status of their application. So you can see if it's being reviewed, if a decision has been made. Um, but even before that, you can see if those recommendations have been received. If they haven't, it's a great way, it's a great tool to use to say, go back to the person and say, hey, um, the Academy hasn't received your recommendation yet. Um, could you do that? And if they say they haven't received it or if they've misplaced the email or the link, just reach out to me or to Kendall Harris, our admissions counselor, and we can resend that link to them. No problem whatsoever. And then the final piece I want to mention is the transcript. Um, we will require a transcript and that will be uploaded into the student portal. And that transcript should be of all completed semesters of high school, along with a screenshot of current grades. And that can be from any web-based application your school may use, or sometimes students will go and ask the office to, to pull together um, a screenshot or a report of where uh, their grades currently are. Uh, either way is absolutely fine. Um, it all has to be in one document, though, in order for it to be uploaded into um, the application. And again, that's done from the student portal. Um, so the Academy is on what's called a rolling admission process. And really, all that means is it's first come, first serve. Um, so those applying um, as sophomores, yours is a little bit different. It will still be a rolling admission process, but we won't actually review any sophomore applications until after the January 29th deadline. Um, so those will all go into review together on January 30th, and you'll get your decision a few weeks after that. Um, from that point on though, we will go into a rolling um, admissions process for our sophomores. For our juniors and seniors, we're actually um, in a 
a rolling admission process right now. So as soon as your application is complete and we have your um, updated grades and all of that, then your application will automatically go into review and you should have a decision back within a few weeks. And that's all done by email. So you'll receive that uh, decision at the email address that you use to start your application. I, I want to point out that when I say completed application, the online application is done and submitted. You don't have to wait to submit the online portion for all of the recommendations to come in. We actually prefer for you to submit it just as soon as you have it done that way. And we'll continue to track those recommendation pieces and you can track them too through your, your student portal. So a completed application is the online application is submitted. All of the recommendations are received and your transcript and um, screenshot of current grades are received. Once we have all of that, then an application is considered complete and we'll go into the review process that I mentioned. So what is a decision based upon? What are we looking for? And we're looking first for well-rounded students. So students that are not only um, active in the classroom and doing well academically, but who are also involved in something outside of the classroom, whether it's school related or community related, um, that, that piece of it isn't as important as being involved in something outside of the classroom. The reason we're looking at that is to see how the student is able to balance their, their time, their academic time with their, their personal or social time. Um, so well-rounded students. Um, in terms of the overall decision, about 60% of the decision is based on academics. So we'll look at the classes that your child has taken and how they've performed in those classes. And then the other 40% of the decision is based upon what we like to call non-cognitive indicators, which is just a really fancy way of saying we're going to look at um, your child's drive their persistence, their determination, and their resiliency. And we do that through those short answer questions and through the recommendations. Um, so again, 60% of the decisions based on academics, 40% based on those non-cognitive indicators. So I've shared briefly with you what the academy is, what students thrive here, the benefits of attending the academy, and my favorite topic, how to apply. Um, you can use the QR code that's there on the screen in front of you uh, to start the application or to return to it if your child's already started one, and, as well as to uh, see and register for any of our upcoming virtual or on-campus programs. And I've listed just a few of those on the screen there for you, including the one on November 5th, which is our next Lunch and Learn um, program. And that and when we'll be looking at a profile of an academy student. So now I'm going to turn off the recording and answer any questions that you have. Um, please go ahead and begin dropping those into the chat box and I'll get to them in just a quick second. Um, for those of you that are watching this uh, recording on one of our social media platforms, uh, please reach out to me at the telephone address or telephone or uh, email address listed there on the screen in front of you. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Uh, thank you all so much for joining. Have a great day.